Okay, it's Thursday, 18th of August. Yep. I'm here with new brain tree manager Angela Harrop. How are you doing, Angela? Are you okay? Yeah, really good, thank you. Excellent. Right, we're going to have a bit of a chat about you, we'll get to know you a bit, a bit better. Yep, no worries. <laughs> uh, and then we'll talk about all things brain tree. Yep. Um, first of all, let's just, just check a few points. You're 35 year old. Yeah. Where were you born? Uh, born in England, Colchester. So you've got Welsh nationality, is that right? Is that yeah, so my uh, great grandparents were from Wales, so that was obviously uh, the whole story about the yeah. international stuff. That's right. Um, which was a good experience at the time. Who did you support? Liverpool. Right, pass it on the next question then. <laughs> so, your full time job, are you a managing director of a sports coaching specialist? Yeah, so I'm, um, it's been 13 years now uh, running a sports company. We work in schools um, and we also have our, our academy as well. So, we're partners up with uh, Ipswich, Norwich, yep. uh, probably four or five different pro clubs. Yeah, okay. And when you come to your playing career, yep. I think I've got down Stanway, Needham Market. Leiston, yeah. Stone Mark, is that right? Is that That's correct, yeah. Sudbury, uh, and a little brief spell in Romania as well, playing playing out there. Was that the UFC Galact Galacticus? That is correct, yeah, in the second division. Yeah. Which was a... That was that a unique experience, was it? That was an amazing experience. I was there for six months, um, but it was tough as well, uh, living in Romania, especially with a manager that didn't speak you know, English. That was yeah. tough. Um, but again, yeah, great experience. Where was your happiest times playing? Um, one of my happy experiences, probably probably at Needham Market. I really enjoyed my time there. Yeah. I was there for four years. Um, you know, worked with some really good people. But I just think behind the scenes as well, with the chair and the committee, it just they were really really supportive. It was a good club. Yeah. And what sort of position did you play? So central midfield. Right. I played central midfield. Um, Many goals. Uh, yeah, scored some goals. I used to take take penalties and free kicks, so obviously that helped. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was always a central midfielder. Okay. And obviously, for this night, you went. You were, did a bit of scouting for each switch. I've got down. Yep. Did you? Who did discover anybody we might have heard of? Um, so when I work with with the pro clubs, because of the academies, it's a lot of youth players. Yeah. So you know, age ranging from eight years of age to to fourteen. So you know the. This year, I think we recruited nine players into Ipswich into their academy, which is, you know, a really good achievement. Yeah. So these players will be, you know, future professionals hopefully. Mm. And I think also you had a link with Norwich City when you were at um, Brantham Athletic. Yeah. So we, when Norwich went into the Premier League, they they set up satellite centres, and I had a phone call from from a guy called uh, Greg Brown. That's actually at I think he's at Blackburn now. Um, and he offered me the job to, to run their satellite centre at Brantham's football ground and it was uh, you know getting the most exciting talent youth players um, over to that satellite centre yeah. um, and then we went over to Norwich to play their academy teams. Mm. Okay um, and then when it comes to coaching stroke managing yeah. um, what have we got? Obviously, Sudbury was your last club, but Stanway Road was it start out there, was it? And then Bradley yeah, so, and Sudbury. So Stanway's a, a local club to me. Um, you know, took over when I was what 28, 30 years of age. Um, loved my time there again. I think that was a, a sort of the perfect start for me. It was a, a club with not a massive budget. Um, I'll help you. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, working with um, limited resources. You know, a nice club is my local club as well, and uh, you know they were really struggling at the time, and I was obviously a player there before, so I took the job, something I've always wanted to do, and then from Stanway, you know, we done well in the bars, we got to the quarterfinals in the bars, we finished the highest, you know, they had a finish which was uh, second place, I think it was. Yeah. Um, should have got promoted, but we didn't have, you know, the ground to to to, to go up the league, and then from there I left and went to Brighton C, which we ended up winning the uh, winning the league. That was the Ryman one at, the, at that time, which was a big achievement for that for that for that club. Yeah. Which they're doing really well now to, to be where they're at. Um, and then obviously I've I've gone you know to Sudbury uh, with a good friend of mine called Rick Andrews, yeah. who's still there at the, at the moment. Um, and I love my time. I mean the chairman at Sudbury, I cannot speak any highly of. He was absolutely fantastic to us. Never put any pressure on us. Just wanted us to do a good job, do do things right. Yeah. 
and you know, I uh, keep saying it to our players, you know, I want to keep going back to the past, but you know, our team spirit and our work ethic as a team at Sudbury was really, really big. And it took us a long way in the FA Cup. Yeah. And probably a big reason why I ended up getting a job here because it enhanced my profile and probably the clubs as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned a bit earlier about you were about 28 when you took over at Stanford. So did you finish playing earlier? Was that just a team because you were into management or was it something else? Um, yeah, I had a few injuries, but I, I, still, I still did a bit of playing throughout those years until I really went to Sudbury where, you know, I felt like it was too much to play and manage. Yeah. You know, um, I, I love playing, there's nothing better than, than playing, but, you know, now at 35 I feel, I feel like I'm at that age where, you know, I really want to knuckle down with my management now, and in this right. league it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough enough just being a manager, let alone playing as well. Thank you. So, yeah, you've, you've already touched on the, the FA Cup run, so how did you do that? Um, well, I couldn't tell you really. You know, you need a lot, of, a lot of luck in the FA Cup, and we definitely had that. Played some really tough teams, so we played Stone Market, which are obviously a really strong team in, in Sudbury's league. Very, very good outfit. We ended up winning one in a way. Then we got chess. Uh, we played a, a, another team, which um, you know, were a little bit lower in the league. We we beat them obviously. Then we played Chesham, which have come into our obviously, league, yeah. which was a tough, tough game. Then we played Dartford. And that was the one that stood out for me out the whole FA Cup run. Yeah. To beat Dartford at that specific time, they were riding, you know, flying high in the league. I think there were 18 games unbeaten or something. Silly yeah, like that. Yeah, they really season. Yeah. Um, and you know, when the draw came out, obviously my dad's in football and he rang me and he, I was at work at the time. He said, "I oh, Andrew, you've got Dartford." I said, oh, "We both, look, you know, said this is probably the toughest tie we could have got at that specific point." But like the magic of the FA Cup, you know, we ended up winning three-one. And just the scenes after that game um, was amazing to see. It was yeah. nice that you know a club like Sudbury have, have reaped the rewards from that now, yeah. you know, and to see what two and a half thousand yeah. on TV against Colchester, it was it was amazing. You needed the magic here because we keep yeah. getting knocked out for the first time of asking. Do you know what? I really, <laughs> I really hope it's not. Um, the last time that, that we reached that first round because it was incredible, just everything about it with the TV, you know, TV yeah. rights and the publicity we had. It was for about two weeks we were riding a wave, it yeah. was amazing. Yeah, right. Okay. So now we move to Braintree, what made you apply for the Braintree job? So I actually didn't apply for the Braintree job. Um, I had a phone call, obviously, I'm very, very close to Jerry Carter, that was obviously yeah, yeah. at the club. Um, and you know it was a it was a it was a fun call and it came quite late on to be fair um, just about an interest you know in, in the job and obviously I came and met met the chairman Lee and we just had a chat and then from that he offered me the job mm -hmm. you know and to be fair he's put a lot of confidence in me because you know we've had to recruit 16 17 brand new players within six weeks yeah and some of those players you know we've put under contract so I knew straight away there was confidence in me because obviously signing players on contract, you know. Um, so I was really, really happy with that. And I yeah. think, you know, we've, we've started well, um, but I'm, I'm quite sort of low maintenance in terms of never get too high, never get too low. Yeah. I think in this league, every game is very, very difficult. So I'm just sort of just trying to make sure I go about my business in the right way. Uh, and I'm a big believer, just you work hard and sometimes you get lucky as well, which is yeah. important. So, were you a joint manager at Sudbury? Yeah. So was there any chance of your joint mate coming yeah, over? Or? I, wanted, um, I wanted Rick to come with me because we have a, we have a good relationship, we still, we still speak a lot now, he's a really good guy. We're quite opposite, which works quite well yeah. in terms of, um, you know, he's, he's, he's very good with man management and have confidence with players and, you know, I'm, whereas I'm probably a little bit demanding, well, probably too demanding sometimes. Um, so it worked quite well. And like I say, I have no ego where I have to do jobs on my own. I'm, I'm more than happy as, as long as it works for the football club, I'm happy right. to do that. So one of the first things to do apart from putting your team together is obviously get new backroom stuff. So what can you tell me about the, the people you've got working for you? Yeah, so I think we we'll start with Steve Pitt, who's the, the assistant manager. Steve's been around for a long time. He's a very, very uh, good family friend as well. Him and my dad go way back, we used to manage together. So I've known Steve a long time. I think it was really important that the, you know, the people we brought in knew the league. Yeah. Because obviously I was managing last year, so I didn't 
I didn't see many games. I think I watched four games last year in, in, in our league. So Steve knows the league, he knows the players, he knows what, what to expect and having that experience and guidance you know, is, is invaluable. Um, Liam Joyce worked with me as the first team coach at Sudbury. Um, really good friend of mine as well, someone I can really trust. And again, he's a young, young coach that's, that's learning his way, so his yeah. enthusiasm will be infectious. Um, Justin's our goalkeeper coach, who's a really, really nice guy. And obviously he's at Harringay and um, does a lot of Dagenham and Redbridge as well. So we've got some really good ex- you know, experience, experience within, our, within our camp. It's a small team, mm-hmm. team of staff, but it works well for us, you know. Uh, the respect from those guys to me has been amazing. Yeah, brilliant. So, have you ever had to put a team together more or less from the beginning before? <laughs> no, I think... Um, and where do you start? I, I mean, obviously, we managed to keep uh, Kyron and, and Alfie, but did you get a chance to speak to many of the players that were left over in the uh, season? No, I didn't really, which was tough. Uh, I set up a meeting, but obviously when getting the job, it was, what, a week or two weeks before pre-season. So it was really difficult. Um, so I tried to set up a meeting with the players. I think six turned up. You know, there was a little bit of unrest with the squad from last season, which you know I don't need to get into. Everyone has their opinions. I wasn't here, so I didn't really have an opinion on it. I just told the players, this is what I'll bring to the table. Um, you know, and a lot of the players have, have moved on. But in hindsight, actually, it's, it's probably a really good thing because we're freshening it up with with new players that um, have really taken on the ideas that I want to yeah, bring you. Bring you, you want to into it because at the end of the day, you're, you're not only going up what two leagues, but I'm an unexperienced manager for this specific level, so it's tough. Um, so maybe we got a bit of lucky with recruitment, but also I think we have recruited really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, having Karen and Alfie, do you think that helps them be around? I mean, Alfie's yeah. just Karen's fourth season now. Yeah. I was really thankful for those two guys, mainly because they, they gave me a chance. And after one session, both of them wanted to sign straight away. So that was, that was really important. Yeah. And that's what I said to all the players. I said, just give me the respect to come and have a watch of the sessions. I do a lot of the coaching myself as well. I enjoy that side. And I think it's good to, to maybe gain that respect from the players when they're a young manager, show them what you, know, what, what you bring to the table. So them two both wanted to sign, and I know they're really liked by the fans. Yeah. And the big thing for me is their character. They're really professional guys, and they're fitted in perfectly to, to what we want to do. Right. I mean, outside the brain chip, you've got links you can call on if you'll give the players. And... Yeah, I think we've done that. The links we have are, are endless. You know, we have a real good links within the pro game, um, which has helped us out massively. I mean, the boys we've got from South End with, with, with Matt Rush and Leon and John White, I think um, you know that sort of set the, the ball rolling, and when you you put on social media, which is so important nowadays, and other players and managers see those signings, it shows that what, what we're about. Yeah, I think John was one of your first signings, wasn't he? So he obviously yeah. been in captain. How important was he to get in? Yeah, board? John. John's been a friend of mine. We were we were in the same um, youth team together from the age of under twelves all right. the way through to the first team. So you know, same age as me. Uh, the respect there is massive. My dad actually brought him to, to Colchester United, so you know our family gets on as well. Um, and he was, you know, he was desperate to come and sign for me. And it's really? quite funny when he, you know, turns he calling me Gaffer now. Um, <laughs> but as you've seen in the first three games, he's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, certainly has. Um, really there. How many fixes? One win, one draw, one defeat. What pleased you? Where do we need to improve? Um, I've been really pleased. In terms of the points, I think we probably could have done better, um, which will surprise a few few people. Um, but I think the first game of the season, I thought we were outstanding in terms of going away with, you know, over two thousand fans, and, yeah. and obviously we all know they're a very good side. Um, and I thought we maybe it was a little bit naive from me in terms of actually probably looking to go and win the game, and maybe a point would have been would have been great. And then we had our first game of the season at home. I thought again, we should have won the game, uh, come away with a point against again a very very strong side in this league. I definitely thought before we deserved the three points. We had some really good chances, um, but it wasn't to be. Um, hit the post, and off the line, and 
you know. But again, it was a, it was a big point to get that first point on the board was really important. That gave us real confidence as a team to you know play against two sides that will definitely be up there this season um, and compete like we did. And then Tuesday night was it was an amazing night. Mainly, well, first of all, for myself personally to get three points. Yep. That was my first target to get three points. In, you know, in the national league, really proud moment for myself. But also for the players as well, I think they've seen over the three games that we're more than competitive in this league. Yeah. Anyone who's not seen it, there's a bit of a celebration on Twitter Yeah. Uh, in the changing room after that game. Yeah, I think, you know, there might be an opinion like, what are these guys doing? They've won one game, and, you know, which I totally understand. That celebration is purely just for us as a team. Yeah. It's not about anyone else. It's definitely not bragging rights and stuff like that. That's not what I'm into, but I think. For us as a team, team spirit is really important and, and singing and having all the players in the dressing room to enjoy their win and we'll do that every game. Every time we win, we'll really enjoy and embrace that, that moment yeah. and that is purely for us uh, to gain that team spirit and that means the players, the management will, will all get involved. Yeah, so how are the players beginning to gel now after X number of weeks? Um, I think we're getting there. It's tough because we have a small squad. We've had a few injuries as well. Um, and like I say, we're three games in. But I think we've gelled really well considering they've only known each other for seven, eight weeks. Yeah. You know, I'm happy for where we're at. Definitely there's improvements. I think we can be we can be more clinical in front of goal, which we've we've shown over the last three games. We definitely need to be more clinical because in this league, you know, there's so many good sides that if you make one mistake, it can cost you. Yeah. So that's something we're looking to improve on. I think defensively we've looked, we've looked really you know, solid. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I mean, last season we ran up nearly 60 players. Yeah. Even though seven of them were in the start of every game, it was a bit balmy last season. Yeah. Um, I mean, how, how hopefully are keeping a stable squad together? Yeah, I know I think, you can't stop people leaving and what have you. But. Yeah, I think ideally, and this is a big thing for me, is about contracted players, you know, um, having that trust from Leeds is really, really important. Because, you know, no one wants to have 60, 70 players. I don't think that the ex-manager would ideally want that. That's definitely not something that I want to do. I think that continuity and as a squad is so important and you can't gain team spirit if you'd be using different players every week. Yeah. But, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm a bit unexperienced in this, in this league in terms of, you know, it's relentless. And we might get injuries, we might have to bring new players in, but, you know, if we can keep it to a bare minimum, we will. Yeah, OK. And what's your sort of ethos? I mean, do you set monthly targets for yourself to look at the future and think, oh, we should get so many points, or is it game by game? How do you? What I've done this usually. No, so progress. Yeah, you, usually I would, I would set up the month ahead and have a look at the games and look at where we're going to get points and, you know, if we're happy to take the, the draw. But this season is about every game, each individual game, so we only look at the next, next fixture. I think yeah. it's really important for us to do that. Um, you know, if, for me, it's just about me personally. Is work as, as hard as I possibly can, which which I've done. I can tell you the, work, the amount of work I've put into this football club and into our squad, and just do just do the best of my capabilities. Um, you know, I'm very very confident in, in what I bring to the table. It's, it's not cocky. It's, it's, yeah. it's confidence, which you're going to need to have at 35 being a manager of a, a club like this, and and just keep saying to the players, keep believing what we're doing. You know. Do, do your extras. I spoke to the strikers tonight that if you're not scoring, you, you're always doing extras. Um, and I think this year will we'll surprise a few a few people. Right. Good. Okay. So what will be a good season for Braintree this season? Um, well, I'm, I'm a very, very demanding manager um, and I have high expectations, you know, for... I, I, haven't, I haven't set a target for, for where I want to finish. Um, not naive enough for that. For me, it's about being really competitive every single game, no matter who we play. I want us to give a real good showing of ourselves, and I think this season is about stability. I'd like to bring a real good stability to, to this football club, to our fans, so everyone knows what's expected. You know, it's my first season, so I need to really look at how the league works, the players in the league, and no doubt about it, we'll be, we'll be stronger for the one after. Um, you know, I remember watching this football club um, in Braintree, obviously playing Grimsby, and yeah. the players of Akinola and Davis, and you know, we had Payne, we had some great players at this football club, and yeah. 
we we need to get that back, but to get to get that level of quality, obviously financially it has to be there, but also reputation of how, how the club works in and out. Mm. And that's what I want to bring. I want to bring that stability back to the football club. Mm. Okay. Lastly, I mentioned this to you last week. There's been a lot of good coverage of England the ladies winning the Euros and yeah. quite right they've got all the, the praise. What level do you think they could compete at? Do you think if Braintree played ladies, what would happen? Uh, yeah, well, I thought first of all, I thought the ladies were, were amazing. It was great because we deal, you know, we work with a lot of, of girls in, in the community, and you know, it's really sparse of how many girls actually, you know, play football because obviously the way the boys are and you know, lack of confidence maybe in the girls. So it was, it was amazing to see. Them. Massive well done to the ladies. You know, I, I said this to you before. It'd be great to, to set up a, a pre-season fixture. I personally believe that we would beat. The England so ladies, I. but but obviously it'd be a great game, wouldn't it? It's, yeah. it's it'd probably be one of the first times that that would happen, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm def I'm definitely all for it. Um, you know, I think it'd be would be a great one, a great atmosphere at our at our club, and it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It would. Brilliant. Thanks yeah. for your time. No worries. No Cheers. worries. Great stuff. Thank you.